Hello everybody, welcome back to the first video with an actual fiberglass part <laughs> of a fuselage to work with. Um, last videos popped this thing out and like I said I'm going to go do some uh, flying this weekend at an event down in Miami on Saturday and probably go out again on Sunday for the heck of it. I haven't done any much flying lately so i got to go have some fun. Um, so in order to do that I'm trying to get some uh, stuff situated so I can have the majority of this fuselage to put on to kind of show off to people. Um, first thing up was stab mechanism mechanisms. Before anybody goes and starts complaining about the linkage, this is just for this weekend. It's not the actual flying linkages. But uh, anyway, here's a little mechanism. It's just a single 8917 HV servo for now. I uh, will have a second one here. Those two are actually one set is on its way back from Horizon Service Center, and the other one is on the way in the mail from uh, a hobby shop. But uh, so there will be four servos on the stabs, two per stab, nine nine hundred and forty ounces of torque total on the stab. Um, right now, these things have enough deflection for oh, I don't know. 15, 20 degrees of elevator, maybe even 30. And that's with this setup. It's an inch and a half from the center of the pivot shaft to the center of this bolt. So there's a lot of leverage here and then it's just under an inch here. So there's a lot of effective torque since there's not an inch and an inch, but the, the angle of the rod's kinda uh, goofy. Um, Ollie Nichols from, I think, Ultimate Jets has a really slick little uh, Excel sheet to where you can put in all of your control surface dimensions. You can put in your servo arm length, your control arm length, the angle between the rod and your arm, your your, servo, your control arms and everything. And it will tell you at what speed you need, like how much torque you need for that surface. So it's it's really slick and I've got the, I've got the sheet and I'm actually gonna use that for, for doing all of the linkages on the on the Tomcat that way everything is guaranteed to be right and I've got the other one done as well to do these I had to pull them out if I'd had all four servos I would have just done this before I closed the close the molds but whatever um, the other thing I did is you can see the exhaust nozzles are on the thing sorry for making y'all go all nuts on me these are pretty dang close to permanently attached as they are right now. Um, what it is, I just took some three, 3 30 second aircraft ply, drilled a hole in the middle of it, and those, uh, those captive nuts, I showed you guys on that carry through spar mold. These little doohickeys here. Um, in the center of that plate, I drilled a 5 16 hole, then shoved these in there because that little bell shape end and then the little knurl portion keeps it holds it in place extremely tightly even without glue um but we got two of those plates per exhaust nozzle which you can see the bolts here and then uh i just basically stuck the bolts through put some high saw on the plate put the plate in from the back tighten it down and now the high saw is curing i did that for both sides um but first of all i had to cut the the back side of the molding out of the fuselage and you can actually see down through there see there's some funkiness on the inlet right there I uh, I got to fix that a little bit over on this side I didn't do it but whatever um, but if you can make out the turbine rails up there you can see that they're pretty dang close to being in the center um, another thing I did is I trimmed right there for the pivot bracket and somehow, some way, I screwed up the dimensions on that pivot bracket, and the thing is about seven eighths of an inch too short, and the pivot point is two is about an inch and a three eighths too far forward. So those with nice, pretty aluminum pivot brackets, I've got trash. That's three now that I've ruined out of aluminum, but um, luckily they weren't too expensive. That's what sucks about doing a combination of hand-built plugs and CAD stuff. You kind of got to you gotta work it out. And what sucks is I've got paper drawings for all these parts. 
and my dimensions for the paper parts and the machine parts as far as the pivot is dead on. The difference is the hand-built plug, this portion of the, over, of the wing, actually comes out about a half an inch further um, from, the, from the bulkheads. So the bulkheads show that they stop about here, but the actual airplane, in order to get the, the fit around the wing pretty tightly, <laughs> got to go for another half an inch. Didn't think about that until I almost, until I was closing up the molds and I started looking at things and sure enough, screwed it up. So I have to draw those pivot brackets again or adjust the drawings a little bit and send those off to get, uh, to get cut out. Um, you can see right there, that's the, the carbon vertical fin spar or whatever. And it looks kind of chintzy or more crappy as far as a glue job around there, but that's all high sawed in. There's a little uh, a hardwood filler piece. You can actually see it just sticking below the black carbon tube. And that just filled in the gap between the carbon tube and the bulkhead. High sawed all around. Once that cures, I'm going to wrap that. I'm going to drill little holes on on the vert on the edge the outside edges of it and wrap that with carbon toe throw some epoxy on all that stuff get it nice and saturated and then i'm probably going to put a little piece of uh carbon cloth across it as well and that'll actually like tie that into that bulkhead so it won't move did both sides of that that way that'll be nice and sturdy for display and then down here around the front you can see my nice little clamps I told you guys at the the front of this thing was really, really thick. And what I'll do, I'll show you on the plug up here. You can see how thick that is up there on the plug. Well, I didn't like it. And the reason why it's that thick on the plug is because of the carbon fiber I put to keep that from warping. So in order to keep that from happening, all I did is took a ruler, put a piece of uh, 80 grit paper on one side of it shoved it in the gap because I didn't join these I left the glue out but on this portion here shoved the ruler in with the sandpaper facing up so I could sand this portion that's that's actually the reason why it sticks because carbon fiber is on the top sanded it down threw some high saw in there clamp it down and there we go did that on both sides so that'll be nice and cured here in a couple hours my little Sandpaper tool is literally just pew, ruler, sandpaper. That's all I used. Um, so yeah, that's really about all I, I did. Oh, wait. I pulled out the little moldings here where all the speed brakes and everything. It's upper speed brake. Lower speed brakes are down there. Unfortunately, those now look like that. Um, well, it worked. It didn't work. So what I'm going to do is instead of doing the nice little core material, these are going to be made out of a, a really, really heavy layer of a couple layers of fiberglass. And what do I mean by really heavy layers of fiberglass? That stuff. I'll put about five layers of that stuff so it's really nice, a little bit thicker than this. And um, we'll be good to go. I also did... The main landing gear ones, you can see a whole lot of carbon fiber right there. It's kind of sad considering all that gets cut out and thrown in the trash. And then the nose gear was also done as well. So that's what I got done so far. You can see the little sweep actuator bracket, sweep actuator hanging out in there. Not so well on that one. A little more so on that one. So the uh, this will actually be a little bit further forward, about like right there. And see the actuator is there. Your gear doors are down here. So in order to connect and disconnect that thing to remove the wing, you actually have to go in through the gear door. I know it's gonna be, it's gonna suck, and it's kind of a pain in the butt. But I don't like hatches. I hate hatches. I don't that you don't have to have and. The one thing that kind of kills me already is I got to put a hatch here on the top and a hatch down here on the bottom so you can get to the pivot bolts. So I may, I may actually make that hatch kind of scale. And right here, there's a hatch. I may just uh, start molding these separately. I'll 
go up there and make a plug off each side off the or make a mold off the plug on each side and this will get kind of molded like the rest of it where it'll be an indentation here and then you can use those really small BVM polyply screws to just put a couple around to hold it in the same thing on the bottom I don't the bottom there's not really a a very good scale hatch to put it on so the bottom might have to be a little non-scale it might be so it might be just something as easy as a little uh, a G10 plug or something you just slide in poke down silicone it in place or whatever anyway hadn't got that far yet way more other stuff to do so that's basically where I'm at right now um, this not glued in the reason why is the overwing fairing hatches come back they basically follow the same pattern here and then they shoot across at an angle about like that pretty much from here all the way back not quite the same angle but pretty close all the way back here and up and then all along here and then across all of that's going to get cut out so there's going to be a lot more access than what you're seeing. It's not like you're going to have to go through this one little hole and try and get stuff into. I mean, you're going to have twice as much area to get in there. So things will be easier. And then this whole thing here gets trimmed a little bit right to the, the face of the, the bracket or the box bar here and across. And yeah. Oh, right, here's another little thing. GPS antennas on the D models. Comes molded in. So, yeah. Anyways. Somebody wants to help out, send me some money for some landing gear. <laughs> no, seriously, send me some land money for some landing gear. <laughs> or send me a turbine or two. <laughs> but there we go with the first few slodge. Just got it out, starting to build stuff. Um, I'm actually going to start. If I had the hinges, I would actually have the rudders hinged already, but I don't have any hinges, so I'm going to have to order hinges. So until next time, we'll see you back here in the shop.